Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Thursday, the 11th of April. Now, I once went to a shop to buy something and I got the impression that the shopkeeper was being less than honest with me. It's almost as if he was trying to get my money under false pretenses. So you know what? I didn't go back to that shop again. Now, on a separate matter, we're going to be looking today at this uh, report uh, from, uh, where are we here? Now, this is about a complaint made about Pfizer, and I'll be looking at this in some detail now. And it's good to see that this is being picked up by some aspects of uh, UK mainstream media. But let's get straight into the detail so we don't uh, misquote anyone. Pfizer bringing discredit on the pharmaceutical industry is the headline. Now, uh, the panel, and we'll talk about the panel in a minute, ruled a breach of the following clauses of the 2019 code. So Pfizer apparently has breached these codes. I mean, who would have thought it? Breach of Clause 2, bringing discredit upon and reduce confidence in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, breach of Clause 3.1, promoting an unlicensed medicine. Well, imagine that, promoting an unlicensed medicine. This is Pfizer we're talking about. You would have thought they would be squeaky clean, wouldn't you? But there you go. Um, that's what this report has uh, said. Um, so that one gets a tick as well. Um, breach of Clause 7.2. Making a misleading claim. Well, dearie, dearie me. Making a misleading claim. Yep. yep they found they made a misleading claim. Making claims that did not reflect the available evidence regarding possible adverse reactions. Well, I mean, it seems that Adverse reactions could have been downplayed, according to this report. Well, whatever next. Uh, breach of Clause 91, failing to maintain high standards. There we go. Right, let's look at it. Pfizer accused of bringing discredit on the pharmaceutical industry after COVID-19 vaccination posts is the headline. Uh, now, uh, senior executives used uh, social media to promote an unlicensed COVID vaccine, according to this article. Pfizer found to have breached the regulatory code five times. Not four, not three, five times. Now, this is from the prescriptions, uh, Prescription Medicines Code of Practice Authority. Bit of a mouthful, but there you go. It's good to know that we have these watchdogs still active in the UK. And um, it really is good that we do still have some uh, vestiges of, of decency and accountability in the United Kingdom. Prescriptions, Medicines Code of Practice Authority, PMCPA. Can't say I've been over familiar with it in the past, but uh, good to know that they've made a ruling on this particular point. Now, this relates to a complaint about a message posted on Twitter back in November 2020 by senior Pfizer employees. Now, the complaint said said this uh, the complainer alleged that it turned out that such misbehavior was even more widespread than they had thought wow even more widespread than they thought extending right up to the top of their uk operation and was apparently continuing to this very day well we couldn't possibly comment on that of course but we can say what the panel ruling said um the panel noted Pfizer's submission. Sorry, this is still from the uh, from the newspaper. The panel noted Pfizer, uh, Pfizer's submission that on further investigation into this complaint, four of the Pfizer UK colleagues, including another senior UK a senior colleague in the UK organisation, had retweeted the same post. But let's get on to the detail. Now, this is from this actual report itself. Uh, perfectly readable, uh, perfectly understandable. You can read it all in about half an hour. Um, pretty straightforward report really just just check it out for yourself i'll put the link in as always of course the panel query whether a social media platform such as twitter was the appropriate form to share such information yeah i would have thought that's fair to query that the panel noted the tweet contained limited information regarding the efficacy of the vaccine candidate with no safety information provided they must have forgotten to include safety information such as oh i don't know Adverse reactions, myocarditis, pericarditis, thing, things like that. Cardiac arrhythmias. You probably just forgot to mention that. Um, but of course, you're probably limited for words on, on, on Twitter, aren't you? So maybe, maybe that's what the problem was. Um, 
On the balance of probability, it was likely the Pfizer UK employees, em, employees connection connections would include UK members of the public, uh, as well as UK health professionals. So this would go to members of the public, health professionals. Well, when I say this would, I mean the, the reports of efficacy would. They, uh, you wouldn't get any adverse reactions because I didn't mention that. The panel noted that the tweet clearly, re clearly referred to the outcomes of the Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine being developed to protect against COVID-19. The panel noted that Clause 3 one prohibited the pr promotion of medicine, of medicine prior to its the grant of a marketing authorization. They also said this, uh, they must not mislead either directly or by implication, uh, by distortion, exaggeration, or undue emphasis. Material must be sufficiently complete to enable the recipient to form their own opinion of the therapeutic value of the medicine, the therapeutic value of the medicine. And in fact, I think we could probably extend this critique to all our governments, really, couldn't we? We weren't really given a full, balanced picture of the risk-benefit analysis. Because the phrase was, what was it again? Oh, that was it. Safe and effective was the phrase used by my government. You might think that's a little unbalanced. Let me know what you think. Um, the committee went on to say... Um, it must not be stated that a product has no adverse reactions because we know the product does have adverse reactions. It must not be stated that a product has no adverse reactions, toxic effects, toxic hazards, sorry, uh, risk of addiction or dependency. The panel noted the tweet made no reference to adverse events and was therefore concerned that important safety information relating to the vaccine candidate was not provided and ruled a breach of clause 7, etc. Right. This was acknowledged by Pfizer, which is good. Fair cop, mate, I'll come clean. Right, the panel noted. Uh, the, 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 the panel noted Pfizer stated that the senior employee who retweeted was the subject, uh, who was the subject of this complaint, had completed a social media training module in October 19. Right, so the senior executive um, who retweeted this had completed a uh, social media training module in 2019. Um, he probably just forgot what he was taught. Unless there was another motive, but of course we couldn't possibly speculate on that. He probably just forgot. Uh, he'd been, maybe had a hangover, a bit tired in the study day. I mean, I've been to study days and sometimes you can't remember everything that's said. So that that's, that's not unreasonable. Um... Activity which was clearly outside the company policy had not been taken down or deleted. Oh dear, so it looks like the company forgot to take it down as well. Okay, or didn't notice it was there. Anyway, it was left up for a period of time. The article goes on in the in the Telegraph, this is. Unlicensed medicine proactively disseminated. Unlicensed medicines being proactively disseminated on Twitter to health professionals and members of the public in the UK. Hmm. Uh, Pfizer... UK spokesman fully recognised and accepted the issues highlighted by this PMCPA. Just remind myself what that stands for. <laughs> PMCPA stands for um, Prescription Medicines Code of Practice Authority. Um, fully recognises the ruling and it's deeply sorry. Oh, they were deeply sorry. Deeply sorry. Pfizer said it was accidental and un unintentional, uh, but it's the sixth time Pfizer has been reprimanded by the regulators over its promotion of the COVID vaccines. Presumably on each of these six occasions, they may well have been accidental and unintentional, and presumably they were also deeply sorry. Ben Kingsley, us for them, uh, excellent pioneering organisation, not pioneering, what's the word I'm looking for, campaigning organisation. It's astonishing how many times Pfizer's senior executives have been found guilty of serious regulatory offences, in this case including the most serious offence of all, under the UK Code of Practice. Yet, the consequences for Pfizer and the individuals concerned continue to be derisory. 
This hopeless system of regulation for a multi-billion dollar life and death industry has become a sham in dire need of a reform. Which sounds reasonable to me. I would have said dire need of reform is a good description. But they did say the sorry. Now, remember that Actually, that kind of links in a little bit, doesn't it, to what I said at the start. That that uh, when I was just musing about uh, going to a, a retail outlet that gave me disingenuous information, I didn't go back there. So I wonder if we can expect our governments to change the shops that they go to. Let's uh, wait and find out, but don't hold your breath. Now, on a completely preposterous matter... There's been some intimations about my motorcycling activity. Some people even saying that I don't ride motorcycles. Now, this is an evidence-based channel. And uh, as you know, probably, uh, probably know I've been doing some work in Australia recently. But I did get time to do a quick bit of motorcycling. So um, I'm going to give evidence now uh, of my uh, limited capacity on a motorcycle. And I was being very responsible and riding very slowly. So let's... Uh, Take the evidence now. You don't take my word for this. Evaluate the evidence. And you decide if this evidence is sufficient to demonstrate my motorcycling credentials, as has been questioned by some uh, viewers. You decide for yourself. Don't let me make... I'm not, I'm not here to think for you. Uh, I'm just here to make suggestions. like Lawrence of Arabia coming out of the hems, isn't it? What was that Omar Sharif? <laughs> it's really sandy that road, you have to be really careful not to slip. Road, Perth, in the direction of Alice. I was going in the direction of Alice, but it's quite exactly Hope to see you later. Just after this point, I got lost. It's found again sometime. <laughs> yeah. Well, if anyone's still awake, there you go. Just shows you shouldn't take yourself too seriously. But serious points in this video as well, so thank you for watching.